This video is specifically going to be looking at parameters in methods. I'll be using Unity and C Sharp for my examples. So here I am in a basic class. Um, I've got my start method here. And let's talk about methods and parameters a little bit. In my past video, I talked about how to pass in a single parameter and also return a value if you're looking for that information. But let's start with one uh, value. So, and I'm going to not worry about um, returning a value at this point. Let's say I want a method that simply squares a number. So it multiplies it by itself. So I'll be passing in one argument into a parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and make a method here. I'm going to say void. Let's call it square it. And I have a single parameter, and that's going to be of type integer. And I'll just call it the number. And in here, all I have to do is use the number however I'd like. And instead of returning values, I'm simply going to be just displaying from this method for this example. Let's say the square of the number is, and if I want, I could do another variable in here. Let's do that. I'll go integer, I'll call it result. Equals the number times the number. And so I can just go like this. So I have a method. It will square whatever number I pass in, and it needs to be an integer. It will, I just happen to have another variable here that's going to store the result of that. The number times the number will be in result, and then it'll just output the square of the number is result. And actually, I want a space here, or it'll be all stuck together. So for a method to run, keep in mind we need to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and call this method. Um, by simply typing the name of the method. And since it has a parameter, I need to send in an argument. So what number do I want to pass in? I can hard code it, and I think that's just what I'm going to do. Let's just say 3. So what it's going to do is run this method. It will pass 3 into this first and only parameter, the number. And so while I'm in this method, whenever I see the number, I know that it's holding the value 3. So it really just operates like a variable at that point inside of here. So let's save this and just make sure that it actually does what it says it's going to do. And here we go. The square of 3 is 9. So that's right. So let's go back and let's change this so we can have two parameters in use. And instead of a method called square it, let's call it calculate area. Okay, so I'll do the width times the length of an area and, and then it will give me the result of that. So what I will need are two parameters. And so I'll make this first one the width and the length. So notice I now have two parameters separated by a comma, and each need to be defined by what data type it is. All right, I'm just going to keep result in there. And so same sort of calculation here. The result is going to be the width times the length and it could have it say the area is and it'll say what the area ends up being. So I need to change this to call the method and then I need to pass in two arguments. Since I have two parameters I need two arguments. So once again I'm going to go ahead and just hard code it and how about the width will be 10, comma, and the length will be 5. 
I'm just picking easy things to see the result. So what it'll do is when I calculate area, it will take this 10 and it'll put it in the first parameter, which is the width. Then it'll take this five and put it in the second parameter, the length. So it really just goes in order. You can have more than two. You could have a whole list of, of arguments to go into a whole list of parameters. You just need the same amount and it just goes the first one's in the first one, second one's in the second one, and so on. And then when you get in here, it just treats that just like you would any other variable. So let's try that out. So now it says the area is 50. So you can do multiple parameters with different data types as well. So it doesn't just have to be integers, for instance. So let's say I want to, um, I'll do a different one that, um, once again, I'm not going to worry about returning a value on this, this video. Um, let's say I want to just um, give a description of the things I bought. And I'll say, um, and it'll be a very simple purchase report. So let's just start out with one parameter. So how about string, and I will call it um, item. Okay, so that will be the item name. And what I could do is I purchased a item. And then I need to call it and pass in the right information. And since it's requesting a string, I need to pass in a string. So this will be a big purchase. How about I just bought a car? So it will then, when this runs, it will pass car into purchase report. Item will now hold car, and then it will use it in the method. So we can have more than one parameter. So how about I also want an integer that is the quantity. And while I'm at it, why not do a third? How about the price? And that would generally be, that could be a float, for instance. So here I could have it be, I purchased this will be the amount I'll need a space in there, so I'm going to go like this. Okay, so it will put a space in between. I purchased, let's say, you know, two cars. Let's not worry about the, if it's plural or not. We'll just leave it like that. And then I could actually figure out the price. So let's say the price is of one item. I could do, let's do the calculation before I display. And I'll say float will be the total equals quantity times price. Total. Now, if I wanted to have a dollar sign or something, I'll just need to put that in here. So, um, Let's try that out. So um, I do need to call this method properly. Right now I'm only passing in car. Now I need to pass this in the right order. So if the second parameter is quantity and it's an int, I need to pass in an int. So how about I bought two cars and the price is a float. So I need to pass in um, a decimal number. So Let's say the car is 10,000, and I'm putting an F at the end to indicate it's a float. In fact, I think I could even get rid of the decimal and uh, just do this if, if I wanted to. Okay, so let's try that out. So I'm passing in a string, an integer, and a float. I purchased two car. Okay, like I said, let's not worry about the plural. My total cost was 20,000. Now, just to illustrate the, the float a little more, let's make this something different. Instead of a car, let's call it, how about a donut? And I bought um, 
12 donuts and each were 99 cents. So let's try that out. I purchased 12 donut. Once again, don't worry about the S. My total cost was 1188. The other thing I want to point out is you don't have to hard code the uh, arguments you're passing in. These could be variables, so I could call it something like this. And then I could use those variables here. I also wanted to point out, notice in this case, I used user item up here, and then here I used item. And I did that on purpose just to show that these are actually different um, variables and things are getting passed in. So those are just a couple of examples of how you can use multiple parameters with methods.